the market opportunity in China for plant-based or cultivated meat? I'm here in Singapore at the Asia-Pacific Agri-Food Innovation Summit with Tao Zhang from Dow Foods to get his take. Um, well, the plant-based meat market uh, for China, as far as the next generation plant-based uh, food is concerned, mm. is still nascent. Mm. Uh, I would think you know, uh, it still needs a lot of nurturing and ecosystem building kind of work in order to uh, take off. Uh, but uh, at the same time, China has a long history uh, with plant-based foods. It sounds like uh, you know, a good thing when new proteins or alternative proteins, but it's actually a challenge because the traditional mock meat products have been considered you know, not that healthy, uh, tasteful, and uh, at the same time, it does not necessarily have a very positive like, perception with mainstream consumers. So what we are trying to do is trying to support the kind of entrepreneurs uh, plant-based entrepreneurs or new protein entrepreneurs who can help, you know, overcome this kind of negative perception, especially with the mainstream uh, consumers, with convincing and appealing products. So what kind of messaging do you think will resonate with the Chinese consumer for plant-based meat? Because, you know, in some markets, animal welfare is a driver, in others it's more health, in others it's about safety and security, or, you know, what right. kind of messaging makes sense in China? Uh, I think the overall taste, price, and convenience yes. are still the three top uh, purchasing factors that drive mainstream consumers to purchase food products uh, on a regular basis. Uh, but health and nutrition are also starting to play an increasingly dominant role in their purchase decisions nowadays. But as far as I can tell, um, mainstream Chinese consumers aren't easily swayed by um, more considerations for now. But that could change, especially with the younger generation consumers on a moving forward basis. So that requires people like us to not just do investment, but also uh, do ecosystem building work to raise consumer awareness of such novelty, novelty products and also the benefits it could bring not just to the consumers, but also to the planet. So what kind of infrastructure is there to support plant-based meats in China? I'm thinking of things like extrusion equipment, yeah, right. manufacturing capabilities, or, or biomass fermentation for fungi or... Right, right. Um, uh, I think for plant-based, um, you know, for some of the well-financed uh, next generation plant-based plant meat uh, companies like Starfield, uh, the first uh, plant-based meat companies we invested in China, they have raised enough funding to build up their own factory uh, in central China. Uh, so they're well positioned to, uh, you know, to, to do what they need to do, right, from a manufacturing perspective. But some other, you know, less financed um, uh, plant-based meat companies or drink companies, uh, they still need to uh, outsource the manufacturing part of what they do uh, for now. Uh, but that could change, you know, with more investment dollars uh, going, go to this uh, uh, promising entrepreneurs. As far as fermentation is concerned, actually China um, probably has the, the biggest amount of fermented products uh, in the whole world and also has a lot of um, existing fermentation capacity. So I would think, you know, uh, China definitely has a competitive advantage as far as uh, fermentation capacity. Yeah. Uh, is concerned and, and some of the international companies in the fermentation like uh, either biomass fermentation or precision fermentation yeah. space um, I my advice is always try to take advantage in mm. what China can offer right so we yes. can lower your cost and make your um, make the price parity of your products more more interesting right yeah. to mainstream consumers so what kind of companies um, are you investing in what kind of stage what size checks uh, yeah we we support and invest in all sorts of um, new protein or alternative protein companies, plant-based, fermentation, uh, cell-based. Mm. And for plant-based companies, you know, we have supported companies uh, with different product approaches uh, in different geographies in China, and also some cross-border ventures started by Chinese diaspora scientists or entrepreneurs. Mm. Uh, so you know, uh, our companies, they do uh, plant-based yogurt, plant-based uh, milk, uh, PE-based milk, uh, you know, plant-based snack food, uh, plant-based meat, plant-based seafoods, uh, what kinds of uh, plant-based products. Uh, so, but you know, we, uh, we are a patient capital uh, provider, we are impact investors, so we usually uh, get in um, uh, into this uh, um, entrepreneurs or entrepreneurial ventures 
at a very early stage. Okay. Yeah. So because mm. uh, we intend to play a more catalytic role uh, in mm -hmm. what they do. Uh, How supportive is the Chinese government when it comes to alternative proteins? Uh, actually, Chinese government on the macro level mm. is uh, quite supportive of uh, new proteins. Actually, uh, under the big food concept, uh, um, you know, the Chinese president made some food-related remarks last year, yes. encouraging the seeking of new proteins from plants and microbes. So that's definitely a good signal to the whole industry. Uh, and as far as uh, food security is concerned, um, and a large part of it actually is protein security. So what we do is very much aligned with, uh, with, with what the Chinese government cares about and is looking for from a strategic perspective. So are there many startups in cultivated cell-based meat in China? And is right. there a clearly defined kind of regulatory pathway to get these products to market? Um, I wouldn't say there's definitely existing pathway for um, government approval of novelty food yes. products and ingredients. Uh, but uh, as far as the cell base is concerned, uh, I wouldn't say there's a very clearly defined pathway uh, for getting, say, they're approving their products and, and, and so they can get their products, uh, you know, uh, to market. Uh, so I think uh, in the China context, is the, the, the legal situation is probably nuanced. I don't know we have time to talk about that, you know, but we published an article, it's on our website, to talk mm. about the, the legal pathway for approval of cell-based products yes. and maybe um, yes. precision fermentation kind of yes. products. Uh, so uh, I, I suggest that, you know, for anyone interested in uh, knowing more about that, you know, get we on our website. We will include a link and, for our readers, yeah, yes, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So in the US, uh, where I'm based, the media narrative around alternative proteins has changed quite a lot over the past right, 12 months. Right. Sales of meat products, you know, old meat has kind of fallen back. Beyond Meat is losing a lot of money. Mm -hmm. And it looks like, you know, cultivated meat isn't going to make a dent in the mainstream meat market right. anytime soon. Right. Um, how would you characterize attitudes in, in China from the investment community? Um. I think as far as the investment community is concerned, mm -hmm. um, there's some momentum mm. uh, for plant-based uh, venture investments over the past two years. But that's more kind of a riding on a wave of China's new consumption trend. Mm. Uh, so I wouldn't necessarily say that uh, if the investment community, I mean the mainstream investment community knows enough about plant-based or alternative proteins to make more mm. informed mm. investment decisions. But that could change. I think. Uh, uh, that's, that's why, you know, I, I, you know, Delfus, we not only do investment work, we also do ecosystem building work by raising more awareness uh, of such a novelty product category. So not, with, not just with consumers, but also with uh, the, the mainstream investors we would like to engage and also government stakeholders we would like to engage to be part of our support system for the entrepreneurs in this space. I mean, how challenging is it, I guess, for Chinese startups in alt proteins to raise money now, and, and what support do they need in addition to money? I think if you look at the consumption space, you know, all the entrepreneurs um, are facing an uphill battle, right? So, in terms of fundraising, uh, because the economic downturn yes. uh, they are confronted with. So, um, of course, it's not, um, uh, not surprising, right? Some of the uh, alternative protein uh, ventures also have a hard time uh, yes. fundraising, not just in China but also mm. globally. Uh, so, but you know, uh, with any nascent sector, you know, uh, entrepreneurs need to be mentally prepared, right, for ups and downs uh, in terms of fundraising, in terms of their business development work, product development efforts. So, um, I think all entrepreneurs need to be prepared for that. Uh, but so that's why, you know, um, aside from fundraising work, we uh, we do for for these uh, entrepreneurs, we also help them, you know, refine their um, narrative uh, with investors, refine their business model. Uh, we provide like mentorship kind of help, customized incubation services to these companies, so they will be in a better position to raise more funding from interested investors. So when the time is right.